Hi guys, welcome to the second problem of the channel. Today we're going to be graphing um, the current of the circuit here. As we can see, we have a 12 volt voltage supply and we have this box that's connected to it. We don't know what's in this box, but we could assume that in this box is a circuit with various circuit elements um, that's able to have a current going right through it. So as we can see this graph right here, um, we could see that over here is the time and here is the charge in millicoulombs that is flowing within this box. We see in different time intervals, the charge of the current is either increasing constant or decreasing. With this graph, we're able to find the current going into this box, and we're able to, to graph the current as well as the power. All right, so let's look at uh, this one uh, right here, between zero and one seconds, milliseconds. Um, as you can see, that this is a constant line on this graph. So we know that charge, or sorry, current, IT, is equal to the change of charge over the change of time. So this is actually the slope of this graph right here. So we could say, okay, well, the slope is just delta Y over delta X. So we could say, okay, well, we know that there's no change in uh, the Y coordinates here because it's a constant line. So we know that since there's no change at the Y that we could say, okay, well, this is zero. For two, there is a change. It's increasing. So you say IT is equal to the change in charge, which we could say is three minus one divided by the change in time, just two minus one, which gives us two over one, which gives us two amps. For three, it's the same as one. There's no change in the y-axis. Since there's no change in the y-axis, that means IT is equal to zero amps. Now let's look at four. So you can see four, there is a change. It's decreasing down all the way from three milliseconds to five milliseconds. So at this component four, we could say IT is equal to the change. So we take the final, which is negative two, minus the initial three, divided by the change in seconds, which is five minus three. Over here, you get negative five divided by two. You get negative 2.5 amps. For five, we could see that there's no change between five milliseconds and six milliseconds. Same as one and three, IT is equal to zero amps. For six, there is a change between six milliseconds and nine milliseconds. So we say IT, take the final, which is two minus negative two, divided by the change in seconds, which is nine minus six. This gives us four, divided by nine minus six, three, which is 1.33 amps. Seven, we could say IT is equal to the change of the y-axis divided by the change of the x-axis, but at the same as one, two, we could say that 
this section over here between 9 milliseconds and 10 milliseconds, since there's no change in the y-axis, is 0 amps. So we found the current for each of these sections. Now how do we graph it? Well, we could graph it by graphing the charge in amps by time in milliseconds. Kind of like what we did here. But we would graph it in different sections, or I mean, sorry, the same sections between one and seven. And we could say, okay, well, between zero and one, there's no charge, it's zero amps. Since there's no charge, there's no current, so that's zero. Between one and two milliseconds, we do have uh, current going through it, and that's going to be like this, where it's 2 amps. Between 2 and 3 milliseconds, again, we have 0 amps. Between 3 and 5 milliseconds, we have negative 2.5 amps. So this is going to look something like this. Between five, uh, sorry, yeah, between five milliseconds and six milliseconds, again, we have zero amps. Between um, uh, six milliseconds and nine milliseconds, we have 1.33 amps. It's going to look something like this, and this is going to be 6 and 9, and this is going to be over here, 1.33, and then between 9 to wherever the, amper, um, the charge stops, it's going to be 0 milliseconds. So this is kind of what the graph looks like for the charge. So it could be, it's just shown in boxes, and in the very intervals, or in between these boxes of the intervals, the, there's no current flowing through this circuit. To find power, we know that power is equal to the current times the voltage. So for example, for the power of uh, section one, it would just be equal to zero. Power in section two would not be equal to, equal to zero because there's two amps. So let's calculate those individually. In section one, power is equal to zero amps times the voltage, which gives us zero watts. That makes sense since there's no current flowing through the circuit. Two, we have power is equal to two amps times 12 volts gives us 24 watts. <clears throat> In section three, we have again, power is equal to zero watts because there's no current flowing into the circuit. In section four, we have power is equal to negative 2.5 times 12 volts this gives us negative 30 watts. Five, again, we have zero amps. So that means zero watts. Six, we have power is equal to 1.33 amps times 12 volts. That gives us around 16 watts. Section seven, again, zero current is going into the circuit. Power is equal to zero watts. 
If we were to graph the power, it would look exactly the same shape as um, the current, but it's going to be scaled differently. It's going to be scaled by 12 instead. So it's going to look exactly like the boxes. It's just going to have different magnitudes, magnitudes um, for the y-axis. And from uh, uh, the problem uh, in the video that I uploaded before this, we saw that the negative power, so for example, negative power, negative power means that the power is being supplied to the circuit. And positive power is the power that is being absorbed by the circuit. So again, this is just first principles of analyzing the power of uh, a circuit that we don't really know and that we could determine from um, the charge graph here. Perfect, awesome. Thank you for viewing my video. Thank you.